I haven't talked about many single player games here on this channel, have I? Well, technically, I haven't really talked about that many games in general here. Mostly Smash Brothers with the occasional uh, Pokemon, Mario Party, and whatnot. If I'm being completely honest with myself, over the past several years I've just been playing less and less video games. I remember back when I used to be like, oh hey, I've heard really good things about this lawyer series, engaging characters, interesting story, yeah, let me try that out. Or a satisfying platformer with good movement, good music, and a high difficulty, sure, let's try that. Now my reaction to a lot of new games like this is more along the lines of, oh cool, that does look interesting. Maybe I'll get to it at some point. Now part of that does come down to money. It was far easier to make purchases when I had more disposable income, and especially when your parents would buy games for you. But I will admit it's also due to a lack of enthusiasm on my part. I've just lost a bit of that drive to engage in many new absorbing single player experiences. With a few exceptions here and there, of course, but, I mean, like, hell. I've had a Switch for a couple of years now and still have yet to even touch Breath of the Wild or Mario Odyssey. And, like, they do look like a ton of fun, don't get me wrong, but, again, it's just like... Eh, I don't know. Over time, gaming has become much more of a social thing for me. I love playing the shit out of games like Super Smash Bros, Mario Kart, Mario Party, Jackbox, Street Fighter, Dragon Ball Fighters, and even showing off our islands in Animal Crossing. But then I remember back to some of my favorite games of all time, like Majora's Mask, Saints Row 2, Silent Hill 2, and I'm like, man, I really like those. And I'm not trying to say, oh, games these days can't hold a candle to the older ones I like. It's entirely on me for not giving many of these games a shot. However, last summer, I decided to change that. It was the Steam Summer Sale, and I was going to take advantage of it. I was going to get off of my ass and then get back down on my ass and finally buy a couple of games I've been wanting to play for a while. There was Bloodstained Ritual of the Night, I'm a fan of Metroidvania gameplay along with Castlevania's style of mixing gothic darkness with a sort of wacky ridiculousness. Killer7, a Suda51 classic that I have played before but have never fully beaten. And finally, the subject of this video. Detention is a 2D Taiwanese indie horror game where you take control of a student named Ray, who ends up getting trapped in her school due to a massive typhoon, and all while the school is slowly turning into a twisted, nightmarish version of itself. Now, right off the bat, this game was scratching a certain Silent Hill itch that hadn't been scratched in quite some time. With its oppressive and uncomfortable atmosphere mixed with some amazing sound design, yeah, I like this. Silent Hills 2 and 3 in particular boast some of my all-time favorite visuals and art direction in the history of video games, and Detention was doing a fantastic job of capturing a similar spirit to those titles while also having an identity of its own. There's a moment from this behind-the-scenes of Silent Hill 2 video that has always stuck out to me, where they describe part of the art direction as trying to capture a feeling of both repulsion and attraction making the environments look both disgusting and disturbing, but at the same time giving them this alluring aura that will draw players towards them. This is something I think Detention also nails while at the same time capturing the essence of a faded old photograph, a, a distant memory that creeps its way back into your head. In terms of its scariness factor, it's definitely not the most OMG funny scream in the scare cam for your Twitch followers kind of horror game, it's more of the psychological and emotionally driven type of horror. Now it does have a couple of jump scare like moments in there, which I know just hearing that sentence is going to make some people roll their eyes, but they're not obnoxious and the way they're utilized is actually pretty clever. In the very early part of the game, once the real spooks start to take place, you'll hear this phone ringing. You go to answer it, get an ominous message on the other side, and once it's done... Not too bad, and it seems pretty unnecessary, but it sets a precedent. It doesn't happen all that often, but the game is willing to throw little scares at you like this. And that thought certainly lingered in the back of my mind any time the game zoomed in on some kind of puzzle-related item. As far as the puzzles go, they're pretty solid and kind of fun. 
Overall, nothing is too cryptic as long as you're reading everything, examining things, collecting things, trying things out, the usual survival horror deal. There are a couple of out-of-the-box thinking kind of moments. Uh, the piano one stumped me for a while, as well as this clock one, and also this phone one, but that was more from me being stupid than anything else. Hey, idiot. Zero counts as a number. I will say the monster designs aren't quite up to the Silent Hill level, but they are pretty effective, particularly due to the methods you have to do to avoid them, and some pretty dang good sound design. And plus, it's not like they're trying to do exactly what Silent Hill is doing. The monsters do their job, but they're not the main attraction here. In fact, in the last third of the game, they're dropped entirely, as is the more obvious horror tone in order to focus on something a little more story-focused and emotionally driven. Guess I should talk about the story a little. It's about to get more serious than I'm used to on this channel. The hauntings of detention are set during a very real and very horrific time in Taiwan's history known as the White Terror. A 38 year long period where the Taiwanese people were under a strict and oppressive martial law. And it's in this environment that we're introduced to Rei, a child living through this terrifying period as well as having to deal with her own personal issues. Over the course of the game we learn more and more aspects of Rei's struggles. Her dysfunctional family life, her social isolation, crippling loneliness, claustrophobic feeling of helplessness, all very real feelings and set during a horrific point in history that could take those feelings and mold them into something ugly. This game does not pull any punches with how uncomfortable it's willing to get, and the way the story is told, through not only the dialogue but also the visuals and set pieces, it does a fantastic job at illustrating the true horrors of how both internal and external forces can have a detrimental effect on the human psyche, all culminating in an ending that I certainly won't be forgetting anytime soon. I do kind of want to talk about one of the endings since it had such a big impact on me, which will require me to spoil a little, so you know the drill. Skip to the time posted on screen if you want. I'll try not to spoil as much as I can, so let's just say that Rey's negative emotions combined with her situation and the events of the story caused her to make a decision that ended up having far, far more dire consequences than she was expecting. This resulted in her entire class turning on her. She would become ostracized by everyone, relentlessly tormented and bullied. Things like getting locked in the bathroom stall while they wrote demeaning names on it were just an example of the things she endured on a regular basis. And this, combined with her guilt, would weigh heavily on her. Turns out this game takes place in a sort of purgatory where you're controlling Rey's spirit, being forced to relive all the crucial events in her life and re-experience all the terrible emotions and feelings that resulted from her actions. And eventually, you reach the end of her story. Ray walks her way onto the stage, the auditorium empties, and then... A new item appears in your inventory, and you have to be the one to select it and use it. This is one of the most haunting moments I've ever experienced in a game. I just wanted to talk about this game for a bit because it feels like it's been the first one in a long time that's been able to grab me like this. This game legitimately made me want to look more into the history of the time period it takes place in, and uh, the fact that it takes a video game to make me want to do this might say something about me, but uh, let's not talk about that right now. I love this game so much that I immediately wanted to dive into the studio's second game, Devotion, but unfortunately that game's been permanently removed from Steam because the president of China is just like a, a really chill and cool guy, you know? I did find a decent playthrough of Devotion to watch online though, and legit, it made me cry by the end of it. I'm not even joking, I took pictures of it that night just to prove it. 
Overall, uh, Detention has sort of reinvigorated my passion for video games. They really can give you an experience like no other medium can, and when you can feel the passion from every individual involved in the project firing on all cylinders, I'd say that's an experience worth checking out. <laughs> I hope my more serious tone doesn't come off as too jarring in comparison to my other videos.